How are we doing, y'all? Welcome back to another case study. As always, I'm a developing student, and these are just my interpretations on price. Shout out ICT. Let's get straight into it. This is the day we, we've been continued going on this price action, and this was the final day of the market maker model. As we see, we completed this market maker buy model. We've gone from IRL to ERL on the daily chart on NASDAQ and ES. And as we see on uh, S&P, we finally completed this market maker buy model. So until, until this, uh, yesterday, we come back up and we uh, distributed higher. And then today, we actually uh, took the draw on liquidity. And as we see, Dow is kind of doing the opposite. Throughout all this uh, price action, Dow has been getting to sell off, quote unquote, and while ES and NQ have been completed market maker models. So we're in sell programs on, on Dow. We were in a sell program on Dow, and we were in a buy program on ES and NQ. So... As you can see, the draw on liquidity got taken overnight. Uh, as you anticipated, price is already manipulated. We've already done everything we had to. Uh, PM session closed right here, and then we're just going to push up towards that draw on liquidity in the overnight session, creating a possible London high a day on a Friday and a possible uh, Friday TGIF. And as we can see here, this is the 15 minute charts. I don't really have uh, pauses for annotations, but basically, we have a 15 minute chart on NASDAQ and ES, and you see. Uh, NQ is the stronger. NQ is the stronger uh, indice right here. As we see, we form SMT with uh, NQ within this 15 minute imbalance. We have a fair value gap out, a fair value gap in. This is kind of like a balanced price range. So if we want to go higher, we should kind of respect this area. And that's what we end up doing. We end up repricing the lower end of that fair value gap. And then we form SMT with that. We have displaced lower and kind of just not really expecting much like your weekly objectives have already been met on es and nq so therefore like i wouldn't really be looking for much within this market although that there still is maybe some opportunity within here i wouldn't really look to trade this just because just be fine just be content with your weekly objectives being met but as we can see here there still can be some opportunity and here's that 15 minute chart here we have a 15 minute order block It's the last uh lowest down close candle here with the biggest body right here project that out in time and we end up respecting that very nicely we end up repricing higher to this imbalance right here that's where we end up heading higher and then we kind of just break down and consolidate and notice here that's the 12 a.m opening price we end up kind of manipulating higher taking buy stops here purchasing buy stops here and then we end up breaking back down uh, lower uh, buy side offered here sell side offer here come back up into this area overall just not too much we're kind of just within this uh previous we're kind of just within this range throughout the rest of the day like new york doesn't really expand we we're just within the range that was set in the overnight session all right and notice here on es that there's really no low resistance liquidity at market open i mean technically we we've liquidated here we have smt at the lows here then we have smt with ym so i would say that the the more low resistance liquidity is up at these buy side but it just isn't as clear but we do end up having high resistance liquidity at the lows and then we kind of do have low resistance liquidity at the high so i i guess in a sense we kind of do have low resistance liquidity here we have these failure swings and that's what we end up repricing too but it's just not as clean because at 9 30 we've kind of already taken that liquidity so there there really is no there really is no like nice entry model within this day but if we break it down we can see that 9 30 opens here we end up re we end up coming in within this uh fair value gap here's that five minute order block so on the five minute that's this right here the five minute order block right there and then we come back down we end up displacing higher fair value gap right there boom and then we just end up taking buy side here so very very kind of short-term trade, you know, just very, very scalpy. Got to be a scalper on a Friday like this. And uh, here is the, the NASDAQ, which I think is a little bit better. As we see NASDAQ, we can tell that the low resistance liquidity is, is, at, is at these highs. And here on the one-minute chart is very nice, very well, pretty, pretty nice delivery on NASDAQ as well. We have low resistance liquidity at the highs. We've taken sell-side liquidity. We have purged sell-side liquidity. We are more probable for us to reprice these highs than it is to reprice back to these lows. Whereas low versus liquidity, we end up having fair value gap in, fair value gap out, BPR fair value gap, manipulations fair value gaps uh, lower, enticing uh, enticing traders to catch this on a breakout. Then we come back up, we reprice higher, 
Fair value gap right there. Boom. And then we end up going straight to buy side. And this is here. A nice, nice handsome 40 points. 40 points there. And notice how we don't, we don't, uh, we don't trade to this for value gap because we don't need to because it's a balanced price range. Here, we just barely traded that one. And then we end up heading higher there. Yeah. So nice little, little model right here. And here is the ES chart. And here is the 950 macro. Notice how 950 macro, we end up, uh, taking this draw liquidity right here, this short term draw liquidity, and then we end up retracing lower. So 950 macro completes this, and then we end up uh, retracing lower. And there might be something in there, and then we come back down to the lower block, and then we continue into a buy program, and then we shift into a buy program. And as you can see here, we have five minute order block, we come back down into that, and then we end up price ends up changing the state of delivery again. Here, we end up forming a fair value gap, five minute fair value gap, we end up come back down. Maybe mean threshold of this order block. I didn't map that out at all. But then we end up repricing higher to that 15 minute for value gap. And here is a three minute chart. And I'm showing the nice three minute delivery right to this order block. Right right there. Boom. Nice. And as you see, uh, we have 1050 to 1110 macro gives us that entry. So it's very, very nice. Very nice. Very nice delivery there. And here is uh, showing 13 points. You would have got like a 13 point range. Very, very nice delivery as well. And notice what we end up having here. Fair value gap in, fair value gap out. It's, that's that's exactly what we want to see. Fair value gap gets traded to right here. And here is that one minute change state delivery. One minute fair value gap right there. We come to propulsion candle right here. You have a propulsion block. Very nice. Very nice. Look at the delivery. Look at the delivery here on this propulsion block right here. Right to that high of that candle. Ooh, that, that's that's just beautiful. And right here, we refer back to this down close candle right there. Fair value gap right there. If you, in case you missed it, in case you're hesitant, in case you didn't want to sell in a premium, boom. Let me come back up to these highs right here. And here we have traded into that uh, fair value gap again, that 15 minute imbalance, and the kind of the repeating theme. We have fair value gap in, fair value gap out. That's exactly what you want to see. We end up holding this fair value gap right there. Uh, we have a nice meaty up close candle here. It's followed by displacement. Smart money was selling within here. We have a two minute order block right there. It gets respected perfectly. And then here we have another another macro that starts to move lower, starts spooling lower. And now we have these low resistance liquidity signatures right here. We don't really need to do anything in terms of the weekly. The weekly objective has been met, so we don't really need to head any higher here. We're going to reprice lower to these lows. And here we have a nice market maker sell model here here we have the original consolidation then we have a return to the original consolidation we have accumulation and then we have another area of accumulation smart money reversal then you have your first area of distribution uh that's your low risk entry but i like to look at it in just terms of distribution areas i don't really like to have like the whole low risk entry because i feel like that's a little bit subjective i just like to see in areas of distribution here we have an area of distribution we have another area of distribution and then here we have what is that? Nice second stage of redistribution. And also what I want to say is that this is a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start like baptizing this a little bit more, including this within here, because this kind of is just a new concept to me. But here we have a reclaimed order block right there. So as you see here, this would be a bearish order block uh, initially within the, the market maker buy level. Th this order block right here causes a short term displacement right here. And, and this it is going to be used on the right side of the curve. I, I'm not the best explainer on it, and I'm just this is something I'll, I'll be back testing. I'm kind of including it within uh, these little uh, case studies whenever I see these uh, happening. So I'm just going to include these, and then we have that second area of redistribution. Boom! Very nice, very nice respect to this uh, reclaimed order block, and as we can see, we end up having distribution. We end up. Kind of pausing here at this negative 1.5 here and having another area of maybe short-term distribution here to sell side liquidity and also what is this green box right here this is that 15 minute for value gap so boom and then as you see here with the rest of the week it's just ended up being friday p.m consolidation it's not very nice action here friday weekly objectives have been met we've already had a uh, buy program and then we have already had a sell program so we're just really going to consolidate we don't really need to do anything we're just going to kind of mark time here is there anything really there? I don't really know. And here, we're just going to zoom out. I, I might do these whenever we backtest. And I'm, I, I do these, uh, I'm going to start doing these during the week as well. But it's nice just to see like the weekly profile kind of just, what, what was the weekly profile? 
as we see here, we have a market maker buy model. We're within that market maker buy model program. Here we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Thursday we take the draw on liquidity. And here, Monday, we were trading to here. Sorry, excuse, excuse me. We end up having a Monday low of the week in that order block. Monday manipulation lower. Tuesday distribution. Sorry, excuse me. Wednesday consolidation. And then we have thir uh, Thursday distribution. And then Friday is already taking the draw on liquidity. All right. And here, I also want to include these. Maybe these like little schematics of like daily profiles. So here's that Monday, Monday day. We end up having a 9.30 distribution lower, 10 a.m. distribution lower. And then 11.30, we end up creating a, I guess kind of is like a, a bear flag here, I guess. We have a, um, we, we end up uh, accumulating, manipulating, distributing, and then we 12.20, we put the low in the day. And then we end up having a buy program here. And here's the Tuesday profile. We end up having, uh, I believe, eight. I believe 8.30 news. I believe this was 8.30 news. Yeah, we have 8.30 news. So 8.30 news distributes, manipulates these highs, come back slower. Come, we come out down lower. 9.50, 9.15 to 9.30, we end up having distribution higher. Then we end up uh, retracing lower to this uh, imbalance right there. And we end up coming higher. And then 2 p.m., we kind of just consolidate. Here is a Wednesday. Here we have 9.30 right here. Right, 9.30 right here. Uh, distribution lower. Then 9.50, we start to move higher. 10.20, we get a retracement here. Then 10.55, we get another retracement. It kind of just 12 p.m. puts in the high of day. And then 2 p.m., we kind of head back lower to this uh, area of price here. Thursday, we kind of have a double purge. We end up taking buy side liquidity first. Well, we end up dropping lower, taking sell side, dropping higher, taking buy side. At 9.50, displacement lower. Then 1020, we get uh, distribution higher, taking draw on liquidity. And then 230 uh, offers to us this displacement. All right, and here is Friday. Not really much here. We have we have a little Judas profile. 930 expands higher. 950 uh, come back lower within this range, and then we get uh, more displacement higher. And then 110 we started displacement lower, and then 2 p.m. we kind of consolidate. Let me know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably do these uh, every week. I'll probably do these without, without the rest of the day, but I, I think I'll, I'll keep on doing these like little uh, daily profile sch schematics. But overall, uh, end up being just kind of this Friday consolidation. But overall, there are still maybe ways to get involved within uh, this price action. But yeah, anyways, uh, a nice market maker buy model that unfolded. I didn't actually, I might just do another, I might do another case study that goes over this whole market maker buy model. But we kind of that's kind of what we've been doing throughout this case study. So I mean, just I guess just go throughout the days that I've been doing this. Anyways, hopefully y'all have a good rest of your day, and I will catch you guys with the next case study.